collagen uh, vascular diseases some of the collagen vascular diseases can uh, present in emergencies so we need to know what are the presentations and how to deal with them so these are um, chronic conditions with long-term management decision that we know things like rheumatoid arthritis uh, systemic lupus erythematosus however um, because of their chronicity they can sometimes present as flare flare-ups and an organ involvement and occasionally determine the initial diagnosis okay uh, so we're talking about Raynaud's phenomenon reactive arthritis rheumatoid arthritis systemic sclerosis systemic lupus erythematosus polymyalgia rheumatica polymyositis and vasculitis in this talk okay so without further ado let's go forward so Raynaud's phenomenon so what is a Raynaud's a phenomenon now this is defined as as an exaggerated vasospasm of the digital or the pre capillary arteries or the fingers toes ears nose knees and nipples okay so the small vessels in this areas they get constricted okay so they they stop the blood supply to these areas and they appear blue so that's a Raynaud's phenomenon why does this happen you may ask so this happens most commonly because of cold and emotional stress so we don't really know why this happened and the clinical presentation is said to be triphasic usually begins in one finger then uh, systematically spreads to other fingers but usually spares the thumb so we say triphasic because the stages included are white uh, which is uh, pallor or lack of arterial flow because of the vasospasm. Then they turn blue, which is a cyanosis because of blood pooling and collecting there. And then they turn red because of a reactive hyperemia. Now the ischemic phases, which are the white and blue phases, they last for about 15 to 20 minutes. So this is a diagram uh, depicting the various uh, stages. So number A is when the arteries uh, you know start going into a spasm so uh, the picture on the left depicts the digital arteries the normal blood flow to the fingers and the constricted blood fill uh, blood flow on the right um, they block the blood to the fingertips causing discoloration as in B you can see they're turning white and then there's a pool of blood there con uh, congestion which causes them to turn blue so this is a classic, classic example of Raynaud's phenomenon. Um, so again, another example of Raynaud's phenomenon, you can see the whitish appearance of the fingers and you can clearly differentiate that uh, um, the discoloration of the fingers and that's remarkably different from what the index finger and the thumb look like. Now these relative temperature shifts may be provocative generalized body chill can also trigger this and fear anxiety and other stresses can also trigger a Raynaud's phenomenon the criteria include specimetric episodic attacks no evidence of peripheral vascular disease no tissue gangrene digital pitting or tissue injury a negative nail fold capillary examination negative for anti-nuclear antibodies and the erythrocyte uh, sedimentation rate ESR is normal so it's a non-inflammatory condition now you could also do a capillary microscopy of the nail folds where you place a drop of oil on the periangle area and then examine with an ophthalmoscope set at 40 diopters or a dissecting microscope you should see irregularly spaced capillary loops abnormal findings include enlarged or distorted capillary loops and relative paucity of the loops so this is an example of electron microscopy where you can see the paucity of the loops again another example of a Raynaud's phenomenon same thing being depicted here okay so how do you manage this what's the uh, treatment uh, so you should avoid cold nicotine sympathomimetics, decongestants, diet pills, herbs containing ephedrine, and then some of the drugs 
include calcium channel blockers, direct vasodilators, sympatholytics, prostaglandins, anticoagulation, antithrombotics, etc. Sympathectomy may be considered in certain patients with severe disease. For severe ischemia, warm the patient analgesics, antiplatelets, vasodilators may be required like nifedipine extended release 30 to 60 mg daily or amlodipine. Topical nitroglycerin may also help. Then heparin or low molecular weight heparin for 24 to 72 hours. Temporary chemical sympathectomy may be required for some patients, which is usually by a digital or regional block. Then IV prostaglandin administration may also be done. The next is a reactive arthritis or Reuters syndrome. This is defined as arthritis following a preceding infection without intra-articular presence of the pathogen that is not a septic joint. Etiology consists of seronegative arthropathy, so rheumatoid factor is negative, spondyloarthropathy, um, so it's very likely to be an HLA-B27 positive and usually follows a GI or a gastric ulcer infection or a GA infection or a gastric ulcer. Presentation is usually in a 35 to 15 year old male, 15 to 35 year old male. It's usually asymmetric and oligoarthritic, so it involves two to four joints. and usually involves the lower extremities and sacroiliac joints. Skin lesions resemble psoriasis and palms and soles. There may also be lesions on the glans panis, which is known as balanitis circinata. So this is an example of the lesion that we just described here. So postular psoriasis on the soles looks like this. Now this is a classic triad. Uh, so you should remember this for your exams. Known gonococcal urethritis, anterior uveitis and arthritis. Now following the gastrointestinal infection with Shigella, Salmonella, Campylobacter, Isenia, um, is when you normally get Reuter syndrome. So this is the most common associations of Reuter syndrome or reactive arthritis. Infection is important to note that precedes the arthritis, happens before the arthritis for about two to six weeks. Treatment is um, by anti-inflammatory medications like naproxen or indomethacin, intra-articular glucocorticoids, and we should expect a resolution in a 3 to 12 months. Rheumatoid arthritis we know is defined as a chronic symmetric polyarticular synovial joint disease. Non-articular manifestations include episcleritis or scleritis, for example in this diagram as is predicted and also in this diagram. So if it involves a cricoretinoid joints can cause dysphonia, hoarseness or astritis. It fixed in close position um, could require emergent tracheostomy. Now ligamentous destruction of the transverse ligament of C2 with potential for cord compression is very, very common. Pulmonary can be in the form of pleural effusion, interstitial fibrosis and pulmonary nodules. Cardiac can be pericarditis, pericardial effusion or myocarditis. Coronary artery disease can cause a sudden death and myocardial infarction. Renal involvement can lead to glomerulonephropathy. Vasculitis can cause distal infarcts, ulcerations and gangrene. CNS is usually spared. Then is systemic sclerosis or scleroderma. It is defined as a process characterized by progressive fibrosis, vascular abnormalities, inflammatory processes, uh, which can be manifested locally or systemically with organ system involvement. It's a poorly understood disease. The clinical presentation often involves a thick and hard skin, usually the fingers, hand and face and Raynaud's phenomenon. Females are affected more than males. African Americans tend to have a worse prognosis due to greater likelihood of having a more severe diffuse form. Skin changes include sclerodactyly, telangiectasias, digital ulcers, calcinosis, and Raynaud's phenomenon.
in scleroderma the abnormal build up of fibrous tissues in the skin can cause the skin to tighten so severely that the fingers curl and lose their mobility so this is a classic picture of scleroderma telangiectasias can happen which is a dilatation of the small vessels and capillaries and causes flat red marks to appear on the skin another example of telangiectasias and these are the bony changes that you see on x-rays Okay, so systemic sclerosis can also involve the lungs, which is the most common cause of death in patients with systemic sclerosis, can cause alveolitis leading to fibrosis, can cause pulmonary hypertension. Cardiac can cause pericarditis with or without effusion, myocardial fibrosis, uh, which causes resultant ventricular dysfunction with decreased cardiac output. Dysrhythmias can happen and therefore fibrosis of conducting system resulting in sudden death. Renal involvement can be presented with a renal crisis, which is an acute onset of renal failure, protein urea, and microscopic hematuria. There could be an abrupt onset of hypertensive emergency. GI includes hypomobility. Esophageal dysmobility can present, uh, also can be presented as uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, constipation or nematosis intestinalis. Some of the examples of the X-rays and CT findings, which basically shows intestinal obstruction and air fluid levels. Treatment involves immunosuppressive therapy based upon specific organ system involved. Um, urgent involvement may need pulmonary decompensation, cardiac effusion, failure, and dysrhythmia. Renal crisis can cause asynipta uh, if there is a renal crisis, we use ACE inhibitor as a first-line antihypertensive agent like a captopril. Uh, captopril plus calcium channel blocker may also be used. Angiotensin receptor blocker can be used for those who cannot tolerate an ACE inhibitor. Uh, now, SLE, uh, it's a chronic autoimmune disease corrected by the presence of autoantibodies with multiple organ system involvement. Etiology includes a genetic predisposition and factors com which combine to alter the immune cell function, uh, which results in production of autoantigens and thereby autoantibodies with systemic consequences. Female to male is 10 is to 1. Typical presentation is 21 to 45 years of age. African Americans are more affected than Caucasians. Constitutional symptoms include weight loss, fever, myalgias and arthralgias and fatigue is often the most debilitating problems. Skin shows a butterfly malar rash which may be fleeting or uh, uh, rash. Uh, oral and nasal ulcerations can happen. This is a classic representation of a butterfly rash in patients with SLE. Lung involvement can cause pleurisy, effusion, interstitial lung disease, pulmonary hypertension. Lupus lung is associated with alveolar hemorrhage in certain patients. Heart can be involved and can cause pericarditis or effusion and there could be an increased risk for coronary artery disease. Renal can lead to lupus nephritis when you found elevated creatinine, proteinuria and hypertension. A neurological system can also be involved causing cognitive defects, cephalgia, seizures, peripheral neuropathies, psychosis and stroke. Musculoskeletal involvement can lead to arthritis, atrophy and tendon rupture. Treatment includes immunosuppression by glucocorticoids, methotrexate, cyclophosphamide, etc. Causes of death in the first few years is by active lupus, by cardiac, renal, or CNS disease, or infection due to immunosuppression. Late deaths um, can happen because of chronic effects of lupus, uh, infection, or malignancy. Polymalgia rheumatica is a rheumatic condition associated with giant cell arthritis. Etiology uh, involves a genetic predisposition, uh, which is very common. About 50% of patients with giant cell arthritis will develop polymalgia rheumatica. 15% will develop giant cell arthritis. 
clinical presentation is usually in people age 40 or more. Um, there's a bilateral aching and morning stiffness which lasts 30 minutes or more for one month and involved at least two to three areas. So it's involves neck, shoulders, proximal arms, hips, proximal thighs. These patients usually have an ESR of 40 millimeter per hour or greater. These are the characteristic areas of pain in a patient with polymyalgia rheumatica. And this is a classic example of giant cell arthritis. Treatment for polymyalgia rheumatica involves prednisolone 10 to 20 milligrams per day. Rapid response is characteristic often after the first dose and relapse is commonly seen requiring increase in prednisolone. Okay, so polymyositis or dermatomyositis is an idiopathic inflammatory myopathy. Um, genetic component with environmental triggers is the presumed cause with an incidence of 2 is to 1 in females and peak at about 40 to 50 years of age. They present as muscle weakness with an incidence onset gradually worsening over the months. It's typically symmetric and proximal. Mild years or muscle tenderness occurs in 25 to 50 percent but is mild compared to polymyalgia, rheumatica or fibromyalgia. Skin findings include what we call as Gottron sign, which is erythematous, often scaly, exantheme occurring symmetrically or the metacarpophalangeal and the interphalangeal joints and overextensive surfaces of the elbows and the knees resembling psoriasis. So this is a classic example of uh, poly and dermatomyositis. They present with what you call as a heliotrope rash, which is a wireless a violaceous eruption on the upper eyelids often with swelling and this presents something like this okay they also have what we call as a shawl and the v sign which is a diffuse flat arithmetic lesions over the chest and the shoulders like this um, erythroderma can happen which is extensive areas of a skin redness and they have something what we call as the mechanics hands. It's a rough cracking skin at the tips and lateral specks of the fingers with irregular dirty appearing lines. So this is what we call as the mechanic hands. So testing includes elevated CK, LDH, aldolase and amino transferases. There's an increased incidence of malignancy with dermatomyositis. Treatment is by glucocorticoids initially with high doses for several months to establish disease control which are slowly tapered to avoid side effects from uh, glucocorticoids and uh, most effective is about 9 to 12 months. Glucocorticoid sparing regime can be used in certain patients so like azathioprine and methotrexate um, can be used. Okay, so vasculitis can be large, medium or small vessel diseases. Okay, so we will discuss this in um, another video. We hope uh, you like our videos. Keep coming back for more. Do subscribe to the channel. Um, turn on the bell notifications and do share our videos to your friends.